there's been movement in fantasy rankings. Yahoo's moved some guys. ESPN's made some changes. ADPs are all over the place. We're going to re recap what has happened over the last seven days for fantasy basketball rankings and ADP. And Michael Bolton's going to sit and listen like a good boy. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. First show of the new week. Let me tell you what I think is coming up this week. Or what I know is coming up. A mock draft from pick 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They're all coming. A points league mock draft? Yes, it is coming this week. Don't know exactly what day. A categorical scarcity show? Yeah, it's coming. A sleepers show updated because the last one I did was a month ago? It's coming. A bust show, guess what? It is also coming this week. A must draft list for categories and for points. It's coming. That would also mean that a do not draft list is coming. Yes, that is true. All that stuff is happening and a few other things that we might be chucking in. There's a lot going on this week. There are going to be so many shows going on. And do I I know I haven't done the Sixers preview show. I know I haven't. I don't know if I'm going to do it at this point. There's just too much other stuff going on. And I'm not sure whether I do it or not. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to talk Monday Movers now because stuff has changed in the last seven days. So let's take a look at what actually has changed. And we'll start by having a look at the changes that I have made over at Basketball Monster, the adjustments that I have made to ranking numbers um, and just seeing where we've changed. I'll talk through some of my thought processes with this. Jaden Hardy has moved up 51 spots, 65 in minus one ranks. Again, these are these are category rank numbers. The actual number or how much they're moving up is probably not that important. It's more magnitude and whether they're going up or down. So if you're in a points league, this is still it is still very applicable to you. I moved Jaden Hardy up. Not that I think you should draft him in 12 team leagues. It's more that the fact that they seem to be prioritizing him over Hardaway, over Seth Curry. And it, you might get, let's say Kyrie misses 15 games. Let's say Luka misses 15 games. Let's say that they don't overlap at all. That's unlikely, but it could happen. That would mean 30, 30 minute games for Jaden Hardy. So I bumped him. Again, it's not really a 12 team league situation, but if you're in the locked on fantasy basketball bowl, we go 18 deep, you have stash ability. Don't let him sit on a waiver wire in that league. We go to 16 deep. Grab him. Just grab him in that sort of a format. Kobe White is up 30 spots, 32 in minus one ranks. I told you about this two days ago, and he started their preseason game today. He actually had some pretty good assist numbers. I don't know that he's going to start every single game, but what I do know is that Kobe White has much more upside than Ayo Desumu and much more upside than Javon Carter, and I believe he's a better player. You've heard me if you've listened. If you haven't, welcome to the show for the first time. But if you've been listening all off-season and pre-season, you've heard me talk about Kobe White and Cole Anthony saying... These are guys who are starting caliber point guards who I'm not sure are going to get the opportunity to show that. I was, I think I might be wrong on Kobe White. I think he might get that opportunity. Now, there's still going to be an issue with all of these blokes trying to come from behind and, and snip at the minutes. But, you know, once we click into pick 121, round 11, grab him. Grab him. Uh, I move Shangun up. 13 spots and 14 spots in minus one ranks. A few positive comments coming out. Um, I'm still not 100% sold on what they're going to do with, with him, um, but I have moved him up just a little bit there, so hopefully we get something good happening. I moved Brandon Pojemski up 62 spots, 61 in minus one ranks. I thought he looked really good yesterday. I, I'm not really sure how they're going to utilize him, but him and Moody and Kaminga all looked excellent in that game. They played a lot of minutes. The competition for Podjemski's minutes is going to be Chris Paul, if he comes off the bench, and it's Corey Joseph. And if there's one thing you know about me, it's that I don't think Corey Joseph is good. 
And Pajemski is a very smart ball moving player, and he looked I thought he looked really good. Absolutely no chance you draft him in 12 or 10 or 14 or 16 team leagues. I had him as a lottery player in the draft, so I'm big on him from a long-term perspective. I just moved him up because he was in like, say, 350 or 330 or whatever it was, and now he's at 250 in that sort of zone. Alec Burks moved up 40 spots. Why? Well, the Pistons started him today. They started him with Boyan Bogdanovic out, and I believe, I don't know, but I believe that when Bogdanovich returns, that he might start moving Burks to the bench, but keeping Ivy in the bench role. I had, I think what, part of the reason I moved Burks up is not because he started today necessarily, is because the fact that they wanted to use him in that role, I only had him at like 19 minutes a game, and I only moved him to like 21. But at that point in a draft or in a ranking list, giving someone one to two extra minutes bumps them a lot. We're not drafting Alec Burks in 10, 12, 14, 16, but... He's going to play. He's going to play. The other one I moved up was DeJounte Murray. Up four spots and nine in minus one. Just a couple of things I adjusted there with him. I gave him a little tweak to his rebound rate. I gave him a little tweak to some of his shooting numbers. Still not fully convinced that he's worth picking in the third round. I think he's more of a fourth or fifth round player. But I did make a couple of little tweaks there onto old mate DeJounte Murray. Let's look at the guys that I dropped down over on Basketball Monster. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate, he went um, significantly down. 93 spots, 85 in minus one. Why? They signed Reggie Bullock. I thought Tate would get 20-odd minutes a night. Now with Bullock, the, uh, uh, you know that I think Tate is an overrated player. I thought he was going to get minutes on this team. I think he still will, but he won't get as many. And he dropped down significantly. Christian Wood dropped down 37 spots and 34 in minus one, the crucifix. I had him at like 24 or 25 minutes, thinking like, well, when Anthony Davis is out, he'll get a start, he'll get those good numbers. But I'm not sure how much he's actually going to play every night. I did, and you know my favorite thing to do. I played the 240 game with every team in the NBA. And I did it for the Lakers, and I could get him like 17 minutes on a regular night with everyone healthy. And yeah, he might play 27 on a game where AD is out, but how often is that going to happen? And he still is trash. He still had bad efficiency, and his defense is still terrible. So I just dropped him down. Take him as a flyer? No worries. Go for it. But I'm lo- I don't think he's very good. I know We know I don't think he's very good. And then Thompson, I dropped him down 34 spots and 31 in minus one. That may be a little bit too far, but I just worry that the addition of Reggie Block, don't play the same position. But block in there means few minutes for Tari Eason playing at the three and the four. Just every once in a sort of slides down. Adding a guy like Whitmore would have been in the rotation, maybe playing 10 minutes a night. Block probably plays 20. So 10 have got to come from other people. And they probably come one to two from a man. One to two to three or four from Jay Sean Tate. 10 from Whitmore, whatever it is. So he just dropped down a little bit. I still think that a man Thompson needs to be drafted in all 12 team leagues but I would take Asar Thompson over him every day of the week. Now, I very firmly believe Amen Thompson is the best prospect on the entire Rockets team. That doesn't mean that Ime Adoka is going to knock him out with 32 minutes a night straight away. It's just unlikely to happen. I think there's a significant chance by mid-November that everyone's got, oh yeah, this guy's unbelievable. Like We need to get him on the court and playing huge minutes. That is distinctly possible, but it's not guaranteed. So I did drop him down a little bit. Troy Brown, I dropped down 40 spots, 45 in minus one. Nikhil Alexander-Walker just looked established as a sixth man, so I bumped. Um, also, Leonard Miller looked good in that game. Um, Jaden Ivey went down 25 spots. Again, all that took was me taking two minutes off. I thought he was locked in to start, and now I'm not so sure. I had him at 32 minutes a night. I took him to 30 as an average. So if he comes off the bench, it is hard to get 32 a night coming off the bench. I don't know that he will, but with an element of risk pushed in, I had to knock him down a little bit. And Marcus Morris Sr., down 47 spots and 48 in minus one. I am not even sure he's going to be in the rotation, which is actually really, really good for the Clippers. So I guess we do hope that that happens. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. You want tickets for something? Of course you do. Who doesn't love going to events? Comedy, musical, theater, or theater, sporting events. But tickets can be a hassle. Hidden fees. Where am I sitting? An app that's unwieldy and hard to use. Well, Game Time helps you all that. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, meaning the price you see is the price you pay. No processing fee, no transaction fee. No, uh, we thought we'd give you an extra charge fee. None of that's there. The price is what you see. Plus, they've got these things called zone deals. You go, I want to sit in that area. 
And game timer goes, settle down, champ. I've got it. I'll pick a seat in that area. And when you do that, you get an 18% saving on average. You don't have to pick your exact little seat. Just say, put me in this area somewhere. And they go, bet. We got it sorted. Bet. I'm cool with the kids. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's. Let's move it across now, and we're going to talk um, Yahoo, because Yahoo has made some changes to their rankings. ESPN made a handful of changes, mainly ESPN. I'm not going to cover all of ESPN's changes, because their changes was Drew Holiday, Malcolm Brogdon, Rob Williams all dropped down, and a few other guys moved one spot. Yahoo made a sizable change to their rankings. The top six guys in terms of percentage of position they moved up. Number one is Olivier Maxence Prosper who moved up 421 spots. You might say, how is that possible? Well, he was ranked in the 500s, which of course was silly. Now he's at 161, which might be pushing a little bit too far. He started preseason game number one. He came off the bench in preseason game number two. I feel pretty strongly that Prosper is going to be in the rotation. I feel very strongly that he's not a draftable 12-team league player. He also had, like, for his good defender with a good body, He's got a bit of the DeAndre Hunters, where in college he got no defensive numbers whatsoever. I'm not confident in his shot. He's going to be low usage and low minutes. That is the recipe for a horrendous fantasy player, at least at this point. But he moved up to 161. At least he puts him on the radar. Just don't buy it in 12s. Jeremy Sohan moved up 170 spots. Again, that's because he was just way too low. I don't know whether Sohan is going to start. He may or may not. I, th- I don't know if he's even going to be worthwhile in a 12-team league, but he is worthwhile picking. So they moved him up into a more reasonable position. John Isaac moved up 230 spots, and I, for one, am not willing to do it. I know that John Isaac has tantalizing numbers. Oh, but Josh, in 2019, he averaged almost four stocks. Yeah, he did. Four years ago, multiple surgeries ago, three book launches and two clothing wear launches and TV appearances later. And there's no starting spot for him. He might come off the bench as the number one forward, but there is still Joe Ingles there who is going to get some minutes, I'm guessing. I don't know why they would have signed him for $22 million if he isn't. Isaac, I don't think, can play full-time. I don't think he can play big minutes. He's going to be one of those guys that has a game where he gets two steals and two blocks in 15 minutes and everyone adds him. And then he plays 12 minutes the next game and that's it. I am not going to tell you not to draft John Isaac because I get it. I get why you want to take a flyer. It's just more like, where is the pathway for success in minutes? And it just takes so much squinting to get there that I'm not willing to do it. Deeper leagues, go for it. Knock yourself out. They moved Carl Anthony Towns up seven spots. He did look pretty good in the preseason, but one of those games was no Edwards. It's hard to judge everything in those games. I think that Towns, while I do have him around 30, 27, around that mark, Taking him at the turn of the second round is totally reasonable. And if you wanted to take him at 17 or 18, it's not going to lose your draft. I just am well aware that the reason that he was down in production last season was not because of injury. It was because of fit and because of players around him. Now, maybe they work on that fit with a bit more chemistry. That is totally reasonable. Just really be careful you don't go too high in towns thinking he's a top five player because he isn't. Anthony Simon's up 15 spots. Well, this is, I guess, reaction to the Lillard deal and the Drew Holiday subsequent deal. Fine. Makes sense. And DeAndre Ayton up eight spots. Pretty reasonable as well. If it hadn't have been for Rob Williams arriving, I think he would have gone up higher. But totally okay spots to have a look at um, Simons and Ayton moving up there. Very little to say about that as I talk anyway. The guys that dropped, um, not surprising. How about now? Uh, this is, I, I don't know if I feel validated. Do I feel seen? Do I feel, I don't know what I feel. But Vooch has dropped 14 spots to outside the top 50. You have heard me make my arguments against Vooch. Is it because I think Vooch is bad? 100% it isn't. It, the reason is I think that Vooch, who played 30 minutes a night over the final 20 games of last season and was able to maintain his numbers by having a 7% spike in true shooting percentage, I'm just not sure that those things are going to, that shooting is going to A, maintain, or that he's going to play 33 a night. He didn't when they were trying to make the playoffs. They reduced him. He's still the third offensive option. He's still going to be absolutely rock solid. He's not going to lose his starting spot. He's not going to be dreadful. But he is 
33 and things can change. I just, and my part of that with Vooch is now that he's at 51, great. Absolutely perfect. End of the round, end of the round four, love it. Oh, what I hated was the fact that he was at like 35 or something, which meant that people were going mid third round on him. And I didn't think that made any sense whatsoever. Now we're in more reasonable territory. So when I do the sleeper video, he's or the bus video, he's not going to be on it. Derek White down 18 spots. I know there are people who think because of the trades that Derek White's value goes up because they're so thin. And I understand that, but that does require players to be out. On a healthy team, he will be bad. Oh, bad, not true. He will be much less valuable than he would have been a week and a half ago. Injuries are an important factor in this, but he's just not going to have anywhere near the opportunity to do what he was going to do before. He's down 18 spots, absolutely a reasonable position. Fred Van Vliet down five. I don't really get that. I don't know what really changed there for, fa- for Fred to drop. I know a lot of negative sentiment towards Van Vliet for some reason in the fantasy community. Not from everybody, but there's a lot of people, man. Like I take Van Vliet in round three and people go, what are you doing? You do you even know what you're doing? Worst drafts we've ever seen. I, I honestly don't get it. I don't get why people are anti Fred Van Vliet. So if I can get him in the middle of the third round, eh, as the kids would say, W. Dan Gafford down 16 spots. Yes, yes, absolutely yes. This is what I said. That injury is going to be great. And it sounds stupid, but he might not miss any time to start the regular season. He was starting to creep up too high, and now he's been pushed back. So last season, just before drafts, Nick Claxton got pushed to 120 in drafts. I'm not saying Gafford is Claxton, but I'm also saying that why can't he be? There's a possibility. And now that people are scared shitless because he's injured, again, their centers are Taj Gibson and Mike Muscala. Maybe it's Xavier Cooks. Maybe he doesn't make the the roster. Maybe it's um, Anthony Gill. Maybe he doesn't make the roster. They still have cuts to make. Gafford is going to be fine. And dropping him down is a huge W. Chris Middleton down 11. Reasonable there with Lillard arriving. He should be dropped down. And a little bit of concern over his knee. I'm not that that worried. He did have knee surgery. It does make sense for them to go slow. Getting him at 80 or so. Good. Love it. And Kyrie Irving dropped down a spot. Okay. That's okay. I thought he was maybe pushing a little bit too high. And I am a little worried about him and Luca and how that all sort of um, plays out together. I'm, I'm, a li- I'm not super worried, but I'm a little concerned uh, about that. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. The Jace case in particular. Because what it is, the Jace case, it's a five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. I don't want you to ever use a Jace case, ever. Don't ever use it unless you absolutely have to, because that's what it is. It's an emergency medication kit for when you are in a situation where you cannot access healthcare and you need it in a life or death death situation. Floods, earthquakes, fires, pandemics, landslides. That's a new one. I haven't used that one before, but so many things can cause you to be in a problem where you need those antibiotics stat, to use a medical term, and you can't access medical care. Having Jay's case at home enables you to have peace of mind for you and your family in case the worst thing happens. So you can get these antibiotics, have them at home for your peace of mind, and hopefully they go out of date. Hopefully you never find yourself faced with a situation where you need medical emergency treatment at home. You can get 20 bucks off these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using the code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Go and check it out. All right, let's have a look at some Yahoo ADP changes now over the past seven days. Again, I'm I'm using these as a percentage of the original number to give us an idea of the top end guys a little bit more. Giannis moved up one spot. His ADP is up to seven now. People are coming to terms with the fact that, oh yeah, his free throw is bad, but who cares? We can deal with it. His points league value is sky high. It is interesting that he did jump up after the Lillard deal. I still think he's probably more in the nine zone, but I do think that usage is going to come down for Giannis pretty significantly. And hopefully that means we get an increase back to his defensive stats because I am fairly convinced that was a large part of what happened last season. So his ADP is up to seven. I'm still not sure I'd do it at seven, but if you've got concerns about LaMelo Ball in a playoff schedule, well, that might be an option for you. Mark Williams is one of the worst ranked players on Yahoo to begin the season in the 300s. He's come in now and people are drafting him high. And in basically every mock draft I see, he goes in round seven. That might be too high. It might be. 
But again, Mark Williams is the starting center. He might get 14 and 10. He might block 1.6 shots. He might shoot 64% from the field with almost 70 from the line. If you miss out on Claxton or Kessler or uh, Victor or Chet or Jaron or Miles or whatever, getting a guy like a Mark Williams later is, is good. It does start to become a problem if he pushes up too, too high. And it is getting to that. And it might leave someone like a Jalen Duran behind, who I believe just got injured in today's preseason game. I haven't seen the severity of it yet. Sabonis up two spots. Again, is this because I've been saying that he's an awesome guy to grab in round two for so many different punt builds with your first guy? Probably not. I'm not that important. But Sabonis moving up two spots is, is probably spot on. Zion's up six spots. We're gaining more confidence in Zion, despite that fake report that came out last week. Anytime you can get Zion out to the top 50, I love it. When you start pushing into round four or maybe round three, I hate it. I don't have that much confidence in him. I have confidence that he is the best finisher in the NBA bar none. I have confidence that he is an unstoppable offensive force. I have You cannot debate that with me. I just won't listen. I'm stubborn like that. But I don't have confidence that he's going to be healthy. I can't have confidence in that. When I was picking him at 60 or 70, I didn't care. But if it has to go into the 40s, then I start to care a little bit more. Simon's up seven spots, reasonable. He is going by me in the 60s a lot. If he starts to push into the 50s, I'll probably push back on that. And then Trey Young up three spots. He's starting to go on the turn in a lot of drafts. He was, again, pretty poorly ranked, I thought, because, again, you look at the rank. This is where I always will throw that number out. Turnovers mean the same as everything else, Josh. They do, sure, but they also mean nothing in respect to when you look at Trey Young as the 50th best player from last season or Giannis as the 100th. It has absolutely no bearing on the way that these guys are treated. And any, even if you believe in those ranking numbers, right, and you believe that categories are weighted the same and you need to count turnovers when you're assessing players, there's no way in the world that any of you would pass Trey Young, pass up on him if he was sitting at 24, which means you don't believe in those rankings. You wouldn't pass on Giannis if he was available at 30, but it means you don't believe in those rankings. That is what I mean by it. Yes, his turnovers might be bad, but we understand how to play head-to-head -head fantasy and the way that we can adjust these numbers. That doesn't give you any sort of valuable information about what Trey is actually valued and how important he can be on fantasy teams. And that always starts out this way and it pushes in and it pushes in and we're seeing Trey come in. And if you wanted to take Trey at 13, I don't actually think there's much wrong with that. I don't. Maybe, maybe I should, but I don't. Let's look at some guys that dropped in ADP. And I did put the big fella, Joel Embiid, at the top there. Now, his ADP didn't drop much, 0 0.5. But what, and I've also got Halliburton on this list too. The reason I've got them here is because when you're at the top and you're trending downwards, it is important to note. So Embiid was comfortably going two. Well, his, his ADP was 2.8. Now, it's like 3.3, 3.4. Now, I know his ADP has been, you look at the number, it's been three. It's been sitting there at three, him and Luca. But just that trend downwards is, is important to note. I still think that Embiid, in most cases, should go at number two. But I can understand taking Shea or taking Halliburton at number two ahead of him. But it's important to note. Van Vliet's down three. I already talked about that. Jim Harden's down three. I would have thought that there was a little bit more confidence in Harden after seeing camp, but I guess not. Jaron's gone down two. Yep. All right. I, I actually do enjoy taking Jaron in round three or at the end of round two. I didn't like him as a first round guy. It's not going to be for everybody. And again, I think blocks overrate him, but in that spot, no worries. Mitchie Robinson down nine. That's a big, big drop. And then Halliburton's down half a spot as well. Sometimes I do a draft and I pick Halliburton at three and I get the one or two stray comments, Halliburton at three, man, what do you to know what you're doing? I don't, people haven't actually caught on to what he is, how he is valuable in fantasy. And as more, I'm going to say casuals without using it derogatory, people who don't pay attention to this sport or hobby until, you know, two weeks before the season starts that are enmeshed in football or whatever, they would, they'll be shocked and they'll start to do drafts. They go, I'm not taking Halliburton at three. What are we doing here? And you're four to six and seven, pushing that number down. So I think that's important to note, but I think that's probably more of the reason behind it. As I said, ESPN made some changes to their rankings with Holiday, Brogdon, Rob Williams all dropping significantly. Holiday dropped 40 spots, but not enough to, it wasn't a full rank adjustment. But their ADPs did adjust. And I still think that there's a thumb on the scale somewhere over there. Damian Lillard moved up three spots. I guess he was just being drafted low because of uncertainty, but it's not the, the Milwaukee situation is not better than it was had he been in Portland. 
but he's up three spots. I b- firmly believe he's a first round player. Aiton's up 18 spots. That's a big ADP move for one week. Almost seems like it's not real, but he moved up 18 spots. Aiton in the 40s is reasonable. Reasonable. I like getting Aiton, especially if I'm in a punt blocks build, because he gives you rebounds and a field goal percentage, which is something that you um, often will struggle to find in a in that sort of a punt build. You, you, you just won't find it. So his ADP, well, yeah, part of the reason his ADP came in is because it was at an insane level at number 82. Okay, that's 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 just clearly ridiculous. So now it's in the 64. It's going to come in further. Giannis up one as well. So both Lillard and Giannis's ADPs rose. Hmm. Kawhi up seven. More faith in Kawhi. You know, I was... I think I took him at the end of round two in a roto mock draft about three weeks ago. I'm okay with him in round three, but people are getting more confident. He's still going to sit back-to-backs. He's coming off a knee surgery, and he will sit back to back-to-backs, I believe, for at least a big chunk of the season. But he's healthy. So let's see. Puzingas up six spots. That's weird. Why did Puzingas jump after Drew Holiday arrived? Is it because Rob Williams left? Did, they, did people really think that Rob Williams was going to impact Porzingis' usage or playing time? I, I I don't know. They must have. Now, I think Porzingis still has some value. What I did when Rob moved is I bumped Porzingis' rebounds and blocks a little, but I dropped his usage significantly. I don't think he'd get a six-spot ADP rise. And Scooter Henderson moves up eight spots as well. There's a risk of him being overdrafted. Usually the top two rookies go in the 60-70 range. Now, Victor's an obviously a different case. He goes in the 30s or 40s. But Scoot was going in the 90s. I think he's going to settle in the 70s would be my guess. The guys that dropped in ADP, LeBron down two. Yep, he was too high on uh, ESPN. I think that will continue to drop. Harden down four. Again, I would have thought there's more confidence in seeing him practicing, but I guess not. Draymond down 10. That is just people seeing that he's injured. Even if he misses time, it's going to be a really, really small amount. That shouldn't fall that much. Drew Holiday down six on board. Steph down one. Not really sure why. And Siakam down two. Well, I believe Siakam was um, positioned too high on ESPN. Let's have a look what his ADP actually was. Yeah, it was at 28. So it was way too high for a category league. And it's pushed out to 30. Points leagues, that's good. Category league, not so much. So yeah, that's a, that's an okay situation for Siakam. And lastly, let's just have a look at some moves on fan tracks. Not going to go too deep into the fan track stuff. Kelly Oubre moved up 17 spots. I would maybe look at him last last pick in 12s. Levert up 17. That is... He probably gets a little bit more with Jared Allen out. Even if... I don't know if Allen's going to miss, but Levert has always been a nice little late-round pick for me. Dillon Wright up five spots. Okay, I don't know why that's happening. I don't know why Jaron Jackson would have moved down 26 spots in ADP. Nonsense. Insane. Crazy. What, why did he drop that far? Marjon Beauchamp and Isaiah Joe. There's something wrong with their ADPs. I'm putting them here just to highlight it. Their ADPs are at 1,100. There's not that many players getting drafted. Something is wrong with those numbers. But they both dropped. Beauchamp should have gone up. Not a 12-team league guy, but he should have risen. And Joe, I, I, that makes no sense. If I'm going to call out Fantrax, if I'm going to call out ESPN and Yahoo for shitty things that they do and tell you that Fantrax is the best, I'm going to be honest and tell you this is stupid for Fantrax. I don't, it makes no sense. Why are these blokes ADPs in the 1100s? That is clearly not real. That is fake and you need to fix it. There is no chance in the world that Marjan Beauchamp has an average draft position of 1100. And, it, and it's going down. That's fake. Fix it. There you go. There's my call out of a fantasy platform, which I do maybe too much. And that's it. That is the end of the show. We'll be back with more shows later today. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app, and you know what to do on YouTube. You thumb it up, you leave your comments down below, you ring the sexy little notification bell, and guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.